So how bad is it? What's the prognosis? In this video, I'm going to share with you a simple tool that will teach you just that. Don't turn away because that starts right now. Hey! Howdy. Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I'm the founder of the Boster Center for Multiple Sclerosis, where we care for people impacted by MS from around the globe. We accept all major insurance carriers and we're currently enrolling multiple clinical trials. Any human faced with an MS diagnosis is going to ask a very rational question. What should I expect to have happen? How bad is it? Will I need a walker? Am I going to end up in a wheelchair? What's going to happen in the future? That's prognostication. And truth be told, we're not amazing at it, us MS neurologists. However, over the years, there are a couple really helpful tools which can guide us in that effort. In this video, I'm going to share with you a tool developed for neurologists. Then I'm going to share with you a tool that you can use on your own without a neurologist and learn the exact same information. So let's jump in. Number one, I need to teach you about a particular scale used to measure disability in MS. It's called the Expanded Disability Status Scale, or the EDSS. It uses a traditional neurological examination to gauge the degree of disability somebody has accrued because of MS. So, an, a neurologist trained to do this test will do a full-blown neuro exam, the real deal Holyfield, looking in your eyes with a flashlight, having you touch your nose, the whole nine yards. And if you'd like to learn more about the neuro exam, I'll post a link up above to a playlist on decoding the neuro exam. So the neurologist does that exam. And then she uses the following scorecard to turn it into a number. So you take the whole neuro exam and it translates into a number zero through 10. And that's intended to represent neurological disability. A zero is I can't find anything wrong on your neuro exam. A six is you need a cane to walk more than 300 feet. Now, in order to calculate how somebody is doing to try to prognosticate, one of the two pieces of information the neurologist needs is the EDSS. The second thing they need is simply the amount of years since symptom onset, not since the diagnosis, because sometimes symptom onset will precede the diagnosis by many, many years. So we need to write down the number of years since symptom onset. If the neurologist has the current EDSS score, zero through 10, and the number of years since symptom onset, then they can calculate the multiple sclerosis severity score. And that's what you see on the screen right now. Well, if you look across the top, going from left to right, that delineates the EDSS score, so the degree of disability. And then if you look down the left-hand column going up and down, those are the number of years since diagnosis. Now what you see is this really pretty rainbow graph. And there's 10 colors. Each color represents a decile of disability at a given year. This table was created looking at 10,000 human beings with MS cross-sectionally over 30 years. And what we can do by triangulating the number of years that you've had the disease and the current EDSS, we can place you on the graph. So let's use an example of someone who in their first year of MS had an EDSS of three. When we apply that information to this graph, we see that we're in the red color. Now the red color is the eighth decile. And what that means is at one year of disease, when you consider 10,000 humans with MS, 80% are neurologically better off on their exam than you are, and 20% are as bad as you or worse. Here's the really important point. People tend to stay on their color. So that person who had an EDSS of three at year one in the red would be predestined by the natural history of MS to follow that red color. If you follow along the graph, at year eight, they are likely to need a cane to ambulate, an EDSS of six. It's important to remember that this graph was collected by 10,000 people with MS, largely not on disease-modifying therapies. A few of them might have been on first-line therapies, shots. And so this is the natural history. It's kind of like saying, if we don't intervene, what will we expect to have happen? Now, the next important point is the goal 
of therapy is to make you not move. It's to not let you follow your color. So that person who at year one had an EDSS of three, our goal is that in year six and in year eight, they still have an EDSS of three. So we will demonstrate that we've beaten the curve. We've done better than the natural history by holding them still in time, not getting worse over time, which as you can see by the graph is the expectation. Now this tool, the multiple sclerosis severity scale was invented by Roxbury and colleagues for use in research. It was not originally intended to be used in clinic with an individual patient. There's a really cool neurologist named Packner, and he did a paper where he demonstrated, on the contrary, you can use this scale with an N of one, with one individual patient. And I'll share with you that this is a scale that I use in clinic when trying to help MS patients understand the long-term course of the disease, the natural history of the disease, and our goal of holding them still in time. But there's a problem. In order to do this scale, you need to know two things. One of them is how long they've had MS, and you can learn that just by asking the human. But that other part is tough. You need a neurologist to do a full-blown neuro exam and to know how to translate that exam into the EDSS score. That's not easy to do, and that's not always available. So how do we solve that problem? The answer is kind of awesome. Introducing the patient-determined disease step, the PDDS. Instead of having to have a MS-trained neurologist do a full-blown 15-minute neuro exam, and then translate it through this weird math into the EDSS score, you can simply hand the patient this piece of paper where they're asked one question and they provide one answer where they assess their own level of disability. This is awesome because you can assess the level of disability simply by asking this one question. Now, if you're not buying what I'm selling, here is a scientific paper which proved that the PDDS correlates very well with the EDSS. Again, we can ask a patient a single question and they can provide the information that we need about their level of disability. Now, obviously the patient also knows the number of years since symptom onset. And with these two pieces of information, we can now turn to a new type of chart. This chart uses not the EDSS, not the neuro exam, but the PDDS across the top. So when the patient answers their own question about their degree of disability, then they go and find where that number is across the top. And then you look at the number of years to symptom onset, and you can see where you, as a human living with MS for a certain number of years with a certain degree of disability, match up compared to a large cohort of people impacted by MS. I find this information very useful in having discussions with patients about the natural history of their disease and our goals of preventing them from progressing along their color. My name's Aaron Boster and I wanna thank you for learning about MS with me. If you'd like to learn more about the neuro exam, click the video that's on your screen right now. And until my next video or my next live stream or the next time I see you at the Boster Center for Multiple Sclerosis, be safe and take care.